In this unit, we're going to be looking at DNA, and in this lecture, is going to be the discovery and the basic structure of DNA. The genes that we studied in previous chapters are made of DNA, and in this lecture, we're going to discover the three major experiments that led to the discovery of DNA, and also the basic structure of DNA. The three major experiments that led up to the discovery of DNA was Griffin's transformation experiment, Avery's transformation experiment, the Hersey Chase bacteriophage experiment, and then obviously the most famous experiment, the Watson Crick actually proposed a double helix. Griffith was a British bacteriologist. In 1928, he was studying pneumonia, and so he was studying pneumonia in mice. He found out that there were two types of pneumonia, type S, which causes severe pneumonia, and type R, which was relatively harmless. Griffith injected the different types of pneumonia into mice. When he injected type S into a mouse, it died. When he heat treated the pneumonia type S and put it into a mouse, it lived. And when he put in type R, the harmless type, into a mouse, it also lived. However, when it, he made a mixture of live R and dead S, the mouse died. So let's go over the results again. First, he injected living type S into the mouse. When he did this, the mouse died. Next, he injected living type R bacteria into the mouse, and the mouse lived. Thirdly, he injected dead type S into the mouse, and the mouse lived. Finally, he injected a mixture of living type R and dead type S. Remember, when these were independently injected into the mouse, it lived. But however, when these two were mixed, the mouse died. Something from the type S that caused the mouse to die was being transferred over to the type, type R. So reviewing, the rough strain, which is living, combined with the dead smooth strain, the virulent one, resulted in a dead mouse. The dead mouse tissue showed that the living type S bacteria, something had brought the type S back to life, or had made the R change into an S strain. Griffith hypothesized that this transforming agent was a protein. We will later see that this is incorrect. He calls this process transformation, which happens currently today with bacteria. It's a common way that they can gain genetic material. Avery, in 1944, wanted to repeat Griffin's experiment with some modification. He was interested in finding out what the transforming factor was, what was carrying the genetic material of heredity. So what Avery did is he took the heated, heat-killed S cells and the live R cells, uh, which by left by themselves will kill the mouse, and put them with different digestive enzymes that were designed to kill specific biological molecules. So the first one he did is with protease. Protease breaks apart proteins. And in this one, the mouse has died. And saccharinase, uh, which takes apart carbohydrates, again, the mouse died. Lipase, which takes apart fats and lipids, the mouse also died. However, DNAase, which cuts apart DNA, the mouse lived. To review the experiment, so the dead S living R minus protein still kills the mouse. Minus fats and lipids, it will still kill the mouse. Minus carbohydrates will still kill the mouse. But minus DNA, the mouse lives, and the transformation would not go through. Here's another side that reviews it. You can pause and look it over, see what was happening in the Avery experiment. The Avery experiment hinted that DNA was a genetic material, but it was the Hersey Chase experiment that showed definitively that DNA is the genetic material. The Hersey Chase experiment took advantage of something called a bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is a virus that attacks bacteria. It replicates by invading a living cell and using the cell's molecular machinery to repl replicate. This bacteriophage is only made up of DNA and protein, which is a very important point in this experiment. Hershey and Chase took advantage of the fact that these bacteriophages only had two classes of micromolecules, protein and DNA. And in protein, some of the amino acids will have sulfur, where this molecule 
that this atom is lacking in DNA. DNA contains phosphorus, which is lacking in proteins. So the life cycle of a bacteriophage is it will float around. The bacteriophage then will land onto a bacteria. It will inject its genetic material, which we now know is DNA, into the bacteria. This DNA takes over the controls of the cell and forces the cell to make more bacteriophages. When the cell becomes full of bacteriophages, the cell will lyse, meaning burst open, and release more bacteriophages out into the environment. These bacteriophages then go on to infect other cells. First, the bacteriophages are grown in radioactive sulfur. The radioactive sulfur is used to mark proteins. Then they attach the bacteriophages to bacteria. They put it into a blender to knock the bacteria off, and then they put it through a centrifuge. A centrifuge will separate out the mixture of the protein coat and the bacteria. When, the, when centrifuge, the phage protein coats remains in the supernaut, the liquid part of what the mixture, while the bacteria form a pellet, which is the solid part of the mixture. The supernaut containing the protein coat was radioactive, but the pellet was not. Next, they re repeated the experiment, but instead of growing the bacteriophages in radioactive sulfur, they grew them in radioactive phosphorus. Radioactive phosphorus was used to mark DNA. And now when they did the experiment and they looked at, after they centrifuged it, the supernautin was not radioactive, but the pellet was. So that was meaning the DNA was injected into the cell carrying the genetic material. Let's review the Hersey and Chase experiment. Number one, the T2 bacteriophages are only composed of DNA and proteins. They set up two replicates experiments, one where they labeled DNA with radioactive phosphorus and one where they labeled protein with radioactive sulfur. They infect E. coli bacteria with these two types of radioactive material. The phosphorus is discovered within the bacteria and the phages that come out of the bacteria, whereas the sulfur is not found within the bacteria but is released in the empty capsule. The Hersey and Chase experiment. By the process of elimination, DNA must contain the information for the synthesis of new phage particles. The location of the radioactive phosphors is, shows this. The Hersey Chase experiment led the exception to the view that nucleic acids were the genetic material.